So I'm going to be quiet for a minute because I'm going to see if you can hear any of the different types of music being played in all the different rooms. Hi all, Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot London. As you can see, I'm in a beautiful setting today. I'm going to show you around in just a moment. Uh, right now, we're in front of Kensington Palace and Kensington Palace Gardens. Now, we're going to take a little lovely, calm, beautiful journey through one of the nicest neighbourhoods in London. We begin our tour with a great view of Kensington Palace, the home of Prince William and Kate, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. From here, we will take a stroll on the Flower Walk in Kensington Gardens before making a stop at the Prince Albert Memorial and the Prince Albert Hall. Next, we will take in the cacophony of sounds at the Royal College of Music before heading down Exhibition Road, home to the Victorian Albert Museum, the Science Museum and the Natural History Museum. We end our tour with a short walk through South Kensington and there's a lot to see, so let's get started. So I just wanted to start today, you guys, by showing you this amazing little round pond, which is situated in front of Kensington Palace. Now it's a haven, as you can see, for ducks and geese and pigeons and alike, and the swans, there is a number of them congregating down in the corner here. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such a peaceful, tranquil place to be. Now this is an ornamental lake which was created actually in 1730 by King George II. So it's approximately about seven acres, about 200 by 150 meters and up to five meters deep. Now it's not to be confused folks with the serpentine which actually separates Hyde Park from Kensington Park Gardens. Now Hyde Park also was created in 1730 by the wife of King George II, Caroline of Ansbach. And the Serpentine is a man-made lake as well. Um, beautiful lake where you can do some boating in the summer and you can actually swim in the Lido there as well. But right in front, or behind the actual pond, is where we're headed next, you guys. And right in front of you is the beautiful Kensington Palace. Now this has been a royal residence since the 17th century. Originally founded in 1689, William III and Mary II, joint rulers, husband and wife of the UK, bought this beautiful property off the second Earl of Nottingham. His name was Daniel Finch and they bought it for approximately about 20,000 pounds, I believe which was a bargain in modern day terms. And they immediately commissioned Christopher Wren, the famous architect, to develop the mansion that it was at the time into the magnificent Kensington Palace. Now Kensington Palace is where William III and Queen Mary lived. And uh, they also died in here actually. William III had a fall off his horse at Hampton Palace eventually died of pneumonia in here in 1702. Uh, Mary predeceased him. Um, I believe Mary died of... I can't quite remember. Oh, she had smallpox, that's right. And around 1694, she passed away in here. So the next person to live here then was Queen Anne. The famous Queen Anne. There's a wonderful statue of her actually in front of St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, she had a royal residence here, and some of you, if you're not familiar with Queen Anne, Olivia Coleman wonderfully played her there most recently in The Favourite. It's famously where she had that final argument with Sarah, Duchess of Marlborough in here. Their friendship died in 1710. Uh, she's wonderfully played by um, the English actress, Rachel Weisz, actually, in that movie. So check out that movie. It's, it's quite interesting. Queen Anne died here in 1714. But I suppose what's most notable about this is this beautiful statue you see here of Queen Victoria. Now this was actually carved out by one of Victoria's own daughters, which is quite impressive for an amateur sculpture. So Queen Victoria, 
the tender age of 18 while sharing a bedroom actually with a mother at the time in Kensington Palace was awoken one morning in the early hours of the morning to be told that she was now queen of the largest empire the world had ever seen the tender age of 18 and she did naturally what any other royal resident would do what any 18 year old girl would do rather she packed her bags immediately waved goodbye to her overbearing mother and moved on in to her 775 room mansion at Buckingham Palace now, Princess Diana lived in here. Prince William and Prince Harry were both raised in here. It's where Prince Charles and Princess Diana moved into after their wedding in 1981. But Princess Diana continued to live here after the divorce and up until her death in 1997. So you may be familiar with it. And the front gates on the other side here is where all the floral tributes and people came to pay their respects to Diana literally five feet deep the flowers at the time insane now at the moment the entire area is closed but as soon as it opens up we will take a little walk around the beautiful gardens which were pretty much attributed to Queen Anne but extensive work in the gardens there as well but a stunning place to visit when you come to London you can pre-book your tickets you can visit inside now the state rooms are open I saw an incredible Victoria, Queen Victoria exhibit in there, not so long ago. Also, Princess Margaret lived in here, and presently, it is the home of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and their three children, Prince William, Catherine Middleton and their three children. Also the home of the Duke and Just Duchess of Gloucester, the Duke and Duchess of Kent, and Princess Michael of Kent. And you might remember Prince Harry, or the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and his wife, Meghan Markle, lived here for a period of time before they moved to Frogmore Cottage, which is situated on the Windsor Estate. But as part of our little Walk With Me series, we're going to take a lovely stroll through the gardens now. In order to get to this part of London, I would suggest the closest tube is High Street, Kensington. And High Street Kensington is an amazing shopping street, but it's just down here. It's about a five minute walk from here on the right hand side. So the closest tube, High Street Kensington. If you're looking for peace and quiet and a nice tranquil walk, this is absolutely where you need to come. A gorgeous a little fountain there. The little doggy on top. So this is the South Flower Walk. I'll help you there. I'll help you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. And just yeah. beautiful tended to gardens. Quiet, peace and quiet in the area. Colors are gorgeous. Just take you in to see this little rockery side of it here. I'm hoping you can hear the bird song behind me. Hard to imagine that you're in one of the busiest metropolises in the world right now, isn't it? And I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it, that truly is the beauty of this great city. You're in one of the busiest metropolises in the world, in the hustle and bustle of the mania of the city of London, but you're only ever always 10 minute walking distance of the squirrel and beautiful open green space. Now when you continue on the South Flower Walk here, that will bring us out to the wonderful 
Albert Memorial. Now, before we get there, any of you that are fans of my tours will know I have a slight and mild obsession with Queen Victoria. I just find her whole life so tragic yet fascinating. Victoria reigned from 1837 to 1901 and as I mentioned earlier she was awoken one morning when her uncle William IV also known as Georgie Porgy pudding and pie had passed away and at the tender age of 18 she was informed in the early hours of the morning that she was now queen of the largest empire the world had ever seen so Queen Victoria reigned from 1837 to 1901 and that's precisely 63 years seven months and two days on the throne and she held that title of longest reigning British monarch up until the 9th of September 2015 when on that date she was surpassed by the present Queen who has now become the longest reigning British monarch since 1066 so she was the longest second longest reigning monarch but she married actually her first cousin from Germany um, originally a political arrangement but she fell hopelessly in love with Albert and they enjoyed a very very happy love-filled marriage they had nine children in total all of which Queen Victoria actually married off to royal families all over mainland Europe. So she had a member of her family in all the major European families all around Europe. So it was a, she was a very powerful woman. She was made Empress of India by Benjamin Disraeli during her reign and her and Albert continued to be exceptionally happy. So Albert had a brainchild in 1851. He hosted the great industrial exhibition of 1851, which was held actually here in Hyde Park. And it was for all its worth, like the world's largest trade fair. Market stalls set up from all over the world exhibiting goods and services from the relevant countries. An estimated 7 million people visited. It was a resounding success. So he wasn't just a consort. He was quite active and a great patron, as I mentioned, of the arts and sciences. Hi. But in 1861, very Hello. tragically, Hello. Albert died suddenly of typhoid fever. Now Albert and Victoria, and this isn't so much in the history books, but I did work as a guide for a period of time in Ireland where I live, where I'm from, in a beautiful place called Mocker's House in Killarney. And they had visited there in 1861. But Albert, not long after, died very suddenly. And Queen Victoria was absolutely devastated. She went into a very deep, dark period of depression and private mourning. And she was not seen publicly for eight years. It took her eight years to face the public. And she only did so because she was strongly advised to do so by her prime minister at the time. And she faced the public to open Blackfriars Bridge in 1869. But she mourned Albert to the day she died. She wore black 
every day of her life from the day Albert died to the day she died herself. And she outlived Albert by 40 years. And she also ordered all the flagpoles, all the lampposts, all the railings and all the taxis in London all be painted black in memoriam to her beloved Prince Albert. Now, when Albert died, she commissioned this amazing memorial to him. And I'll get you a really good view of it now. This is the Albert Memorial, folks. So she commissioned the Albert Memorial to be built to commemorate her beloved Albert, who died in 1861. So this one took 10 years to build. It was officially opened in 1872 to commemorate Albert. Albert. Controversially, it cost something like, in 1862, it cost near £120,000, which would be the equivalent today of £10 million, folks. I think my camera skills leave a lot to be desired today, ladies and gents. I need to straighten it up a little bit so you can see it properly. So the stunning structure uh, completed after 11 years in 1872 and it's a wonderful reminder of the deep love she felt for Albert. It's approximately 176 feet tall, that's about 54 meters and as I mentioned in today's money that will cost in excess of 10 million. So beautiful memorial, but I'm probably not doing it any justice by filming here. You really need to see this in person, you guys. But also built and named after Albert is this beautiful building behind me, which is the Royal Albert Hall. And that was built in 1861. I, my apologies. That one was 1871. 1861 was when he died. So 10 years later, you have the Royal Albert Hall first and the Royal Albert Memorial, 1872. Now, the Royal Albert Hall is another stunning, stunning building, folks. So this area is affectionately known, where we're headed next, as Albertopolis, a memorial to Prince Albert. Now you have amazing concerts. It's an incredible venue for music and concerts. Some of you may be familiar with At Christmas Every Year. It's where the BBC proms and the orchestra will conduct a series of concerts. That's a huge part of Christmas tradition here in London. Over the years, it's seen some very famous artists performing there. In fact, the Brit Awards, which are the equivalent, I guess, of the Grammys, take place in here every year. But you'll get very special concerts as well. Over about 350 music or concerts will take place annually. And you can actually get a guided tour inside there when they're opening up. But I just want to bring you around the back because I'm going to show you some of the most stunning residences in the area. So I think all these memorials will give you some sort of an idea of the devotion and the lost Queen Victoria felt after the death of Prince Albert. Now some of the more famous movies, um, I think possibly one of the greatest actresses I always find that plays Queen Victoria is the incredibly talented and amazing actress, Dame Judi Dench. She's always worth a look. And there are some amazing movies about Victorian Albert and Victoria herself. Uh, the one most recently was the uh, Victorian Abdul, which suggested that she had some sort of a romantic liaison with the Munshi that came to serve as one of her waiters from India so have a look at that movie I think you'll enjoy it 
but right around here now look at these exclusive oh am i on the road residences look at these amazing buildings you guys i was chatting to a security guy here recently and he told me that cheryl cole used to live in one of these apartments and i looked one up there recently just to do a bit of research they're called the albert hall mansions and one was on the market for 65 million that's a bargain four bedrooms in the mansions albert hall mansion which is at the back of the royal albert hall so let's take you over just to show you one of my favorite residences I just found recently. And you'll see the stunning area here. Building the, so these are the main entrances, door one. Obviously when you have your tickets for an amazing concert in the Royal Albert Hall, you will find out if you're door 12 to door 1. Now here we have Albert again. And we'll be heading that direction in a minute, but I just wanted to show you something else. It's the Royal College of Music. We'll be seeing that very shortly. But let's try to get a good look at this for you. The back of the Royal Albert Hall. Now, this rather odd place, chimney, I don't know much about it, I'm afraid. I'll do a bit of research and leave it in the comments section underneath, but I'm not entirely sure why it's placed here, but it must be protected or listed. But I just wanted to show you the stunning residence in the corner over here. I mean, truly. It says it was the Royal College of Organists. And now, apparently, I don't want to go too close because it looks like I'm stalking, is a private residence. You see the detail on the building. So it's owned privately. Somebody actually lives in there. How beautiful. So let's head around because there seems to be some sort of a soprano. performing inside the Royal College of Music. Now, Prince Charles is the president, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, of this Royal College of Music. And I was also informed, these are all student accommodation, <laughs> you guys. And so far cry from the student accommodation, that I had when I was in university in County Cork in Ireland. I was there for a short period of time, two years maybe. That's another lifetime ago. Another statue of Albert. Let's make our way down the steps here. And I'll give you a better view of it. Now I'm gonna be quiet in a minute because you can hear the different instruments playing in the different rooms so it's like a out of tune orchestra with all the different cellos, violins, sopranos, all obviously working in the individual rooms. But I'm just going to turn around here so you can see the Albert statue. Look at that for an amazing shot, you guys. And just a dedication here. And I'll read this out to you because you might be able to read it that fast. The Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Steps were named in celebration of Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee 2012. The inscription commemorates the visit of Her Majesty the Queen patron of the Royal Albert Hall and of the Royal British Legion before the annual Festival of Remembrance, 9th November, 2013. Now, getting back to the 
So the president of the Royal College of Music is His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and the patron is Her Majesty the Queen. Famous past students here, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber and his son actually, Julian Webber. So of Andrew Lloyd Webber of Phantom of the Opera fame. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute because I'm going to see if you can hear any of the different types of music being played in all the different rooms. Take you up a little closer maybe. What a building. So when you're taking a little stroll yourself here now, so when you come down the steps, you're going to take a left and we're going to head down here and we're going to make our way towards the museums and Cromwell Road. Look at these gorgeous buildings down here as well. Shortly now, here's the Imperial College of Science and Technology, and we'll be passing the main entrance to the Imperial College very shortly. Former alumni there actually were um, H.G. Wells, Alexander Fleming, and I hadn't known this actually, and I'm a bit embarrassed by it, but Brian May of Queen. Um, he achieved a physics degree, apparently, in here. And it just shows you this little part of London, this separate part that you can visit in just a short little walk. I suppose the whole journey is probably only about maybe two miles. I just want to show you up here the Royal Albert apartments again. I mean it's a different world from the likes of the West End and Piccadilly Circus isn't it? So if you're enjoying the tour so far, go ahead and hit the like button. It helps others discover the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel. We have walks along the Thames, through Westminster, Camden, all over London. Visit our website for more about our tours, our travel tips, and more. We also have virtual tours and channels that focus on DC, New Orleans, New York, and more. Look for free tours by foot wherever you travel. You can support your guide with virtual tips, links in the description. And let us know what else you want to see. Leave a comment below. Now, back to the tour. So an amazing way to finish off your touring around Kensington Palace and Kensington Garden Gardens and Albertopolis is a visit to one of the many museums also in the area. Uh, the Science Museum, as mentioned there, opened in 1857, has an estimated 3.3 million visitors annually. Devoted primarily to science with over 350 thousand items in there including a model of the first jet engine a reconstruction of Crick and Watson's model of DNA also in 2001 they opened up an IMAX theater theater in there in 3d showing nature and science documentaries so great for the kiddies inside there folks and across the road is the stunning building of the Victoria and Albert spanning over 12 and a half acres you guys a major museum named naturally after Queen Victoria and Albert and a great fitting tribute to Albert in the area known as Albertopolis so it's referred to as the V&A and it houses the largest well it's one of the largest collections of applied and decorative arts and design in there in the world. Over 2.7 million objects. It was founded in 1852. 
collection of over 5,000 years of art from ancient times up to the present day from continents all over the world and an amazing collection of ceramics, textiles, costumes, ironwork, fashion, prints, sculpture, printmakers, some of the largest and most comprehensive in the world. So that's the Victoria and Albert. And then on the other side, as you walk inside, the massive skeleton of a blue whale is inside in the Natural History Museum. But we'll come back to that in one minute because the main entrance for the Natural History Museum is situated at the front on Cromwell Road. But about the V&A, there's also one of the largest collections. Um, it has an amazing British architect collection inside there, actually. And it shows you the prints of some of the most famous architects in London and the drawings of them, including Christopher Wren, Nicholas Hawkmore, John Nash, Sir John Soane, and Charles Barry and Augustus Pugin, all very significant in London and all over London. Their buildings can be seen everywhere but also European drawings. And one of the more famous architects, they have the largest collection of Palladio, Palladio the Italian architect, over 330 drawings. And one of the features in a lot of Georgian townhouses here in London, those beautiful Georgian townhouses, they were all built in Palladian style architecture. And that's because in the lit, well, the late 18th century and early 19th century, fashionable young gentlemen were sent around Europe on what was known as a grand tour, on these very elaborate trips, and they were sent away to learn about the Renaissance, the Reformation, new styles of art, architecture, design. And when they did return, they were heavily influenced by that architect, Palladio. And if you get a chance when you're in London, there is an out of town trip that you can visit as well. It takes you to the city of Bath and that's one of the finest collections of Palladian style architecture in the world. Now the main entrance to the Natural History Museum it has over 80 million items and they are put into five different collections botany, entomology, mineralogy, paleontology and zoology. They have another exhibit which specializes in taxonomy inside there. And greeting you as you walk in, the skeleton of a huge blue whale. So an amazing place to visit. Now the great thing that I haven't mentioned, or I may have already, and I, but I get excited about it, is that all these museums are free of charge. For your viewing pleasure. So the Victorian Albert, the Natural History, and right above and below where I showed you a moment ago, the Science Museum. So a wonderful way to finish your day. Now it's impossible to get through all of these museums. I like to uh, reference, it's like walking into a, a restaurant and eating, ordering and eating everything on the menu. But I would suggest do a little bit of research before you go. And if there's anything specifically that you're interested in, you can check them out in there. I know in the British Museum, they offer an amazing pamphlet or a booklet, the top 10 things to see in under an hour. And that's usually the way to go. But I think it's the paleontology usually attracts the biggest crowd always in the Natural History Museum anyway, the dinosaur exhibits. As in the British Museum, most people tend to go for the mummies. But here we have the wonderful village, well, I like to call it a little village because it seems a bit like that, of South Kensington. Now, South Kensington is West London. 
again as I mentioned earlier on we're in the borough of Kensington and Chelsea and in close proximity you have the wonderful neighborhoods of Sloan Square, Knightsbridge and Chelsea and it has some of the most expensive real estate in the world but an eclectic mix of eateries here from European cuisine to Asian, Thai, an amazing little Turkish place up here. So when you do finish off your day on Exhibition Road here, why not have a bite to eat at the end of your day? You'll have earned it. You will have done your 10,000 steps. There's some lovely little boutique shops here as well, independent businesses. And I will show you around the corner one of my favorite little stores in the area. And from there, you can pick up the South Kensington tube station. And the South Kensington Underground Station serves the Circle Line, the District Line, and the Piccadilly Line. It's about literally two stops back into London, Victoria. So as I mentioned, you have a great selection of bars and restaurants in the area. You'll have earned your treat and your meal out if you do that walk self-guided or with one of our guides here at Free Tours by Foot. But now you should have a better idea of where you're headed and how to get around. So I hope you enjoyed this little meander today around Kensington Palace, around Albertopolis and the museums. Don't forget to like and subscribe ladies and gents for more videos. We really do appreciate any subscriptions because it encourages us to get out there and do some more videos. It's great for self-promotion for myself for future tours. And in the meantime, quite happy to be doing these virtually until we welcome you all in person. Please don't forget again, we do offer these walk with me's around London in other cities, in New York, in Philadelphia, in Washington, in New Orleans just posted a new one in Amsterdam so by liking and subscribing particularly to my London channel here you will be alerted about our newest videos I have a lot more in the pipeline some very exciting places coming up in the next few days and weeks in fact so I hope you're enjoying yourself and you're enjoying this little meander around London. Let me just show you the beautiful entrance to the station here, you guys. And we'll just do a little look at the lovely place. There's Pret again on every corner. A nice cup of coffee. And this is South Kensington Station. So again, thank you for joining me on this meander around Kensington, you guys. Always a pleasure. And as I always like to say, if you have enjoyed the tour, I'm Sinead. And if you haven't, I'm Jose. I left a link there in the comments section for PayPal or buy me a coffee if you are inclined. And any tips I do receive, I assure you, they go on making some very bad decisions, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Sinead signing out here in London with free tours by foot.